Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm your host, Akeem Mitchell, uh, the founder, Trayvon Barnes. It's a little different today. I actually came back to visit my, my guy. Yeah, it's still going to be a very, very special episode. We got the one and only Garrison Brooks. Uh, I'm not, this is my first time meeting you, but I've been watching you. You've been doing your thing up at UNC. Like, very, very nice. So, like, you've been doing your thing, bro. So, keep on going, man. But um, now, nah, right now, we about to just dive into it. You know, I just want to get a little backstory on you. So, uh, apparently, you're from the same city as Trey. So, y'all, the sure. Fet products. Yep. You want to tell us a little bit about your upbringing, man? Basically, I grew up with me and my brother. It was just me and my brother, Justin, my mom, growing up. So, I mean, up until my mom, she met my stepdad when I was around 13. And then they blessed us. Giving us about look, our small, our youngest brother is Trent. So like, that's that's pretty much it for us. I mean, we pretty much stable home ever since I had him in my life. It's, it's been really good for us. From the fact that you ended up going to Auburn High School, uh, which is like you know thirty minutes down the street, but it's a totally different you know environment going to Auburn High School versus the Fed High School. You obviously know. Right. So just tell us about. Uh, what what made you or made your family want you to go to Auburn High School, and how was it when you went? I think the biggest thing, a part of that was basically my mom wanted me to be like in a better school system because I mean, unfortunately, when I when I first left, the Fed, the Fed school this had just came out for the states, well, for the state of Alabama, and the Fed was on it. And I think that was pretty much the that was it for my mom. After that, she pretty much said we need to find a better school system for me and my brother. We ended up moving. I think the difference between the Fed and Auburn is, of course, the amount of people. I think the the amount of money poured into their school system and the, the pride they take in it. But I think that it's just a it's a lot more different. You have a lot more opportunities in Auburn. How was like the athletics? Were you strictly like basketball growing up? Like that was it, or were you trying a different couple different things? I I tried I tried everything basically. So I think. I was like potentially I was gonna play like if I stayed in the field my whole life I was gonna play everything because mm -hmm. I still enjoyed playing everything with like people I grew up with but me going to Auburn I think I didn't grow up with them I didn't feel this comfortable playing with them well like other sports like football and baseball with them so I eventually stopped playing both of those sports when I left that's when you really locked in on basketball right so I gotta ask a real question when did you hit your growth spurt. Because I was a late bloomer. <laughs> when I was going into eighth grade, I hit like, I grew like three or four inches. Yeah. Then I think I, I think it evened out like a little, it was like an inch, like an inch a year probably. Okay. Ever since, I think ever since I left high school, I've grown like a, like a quarter of an inch or a half an inch every year since I've been here. How tall are you now? I mean, I'm listed. I'm listed like six nine and like three fourths, you know, with shoes on now. So it's like just a little bit. Okay, okay. Now that's what's up. That's real dope. So, man, I gotta ask this question. Trey, this is words from his mouth. He said that Auburn High School was running from the Fed <laughs> in that in that in their basketball <laughs> game. That's all I gotta say. They was running from that smoke. Listen, listen. I I won't. I, me personally, I wasn't running. I didn't. <laughs> I know it personally, our team was. I won't lie to you. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we definitely should have had that game my senior year. Um, I think y'all went to uh, y'all y'all went had a, a deep playoff run maybe the year after that or uh, your senior your senior year. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, my senior my junior senior year. I think we we made the playoffs my junior year. Lost in the uh, regional first round. Now I think my my senior year we made all the way to the championship. Yeah, that's, that's tough, man. That's tough. Uh, so y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that championship. Ah <laughs> uh, man, we got uh, really man, we decided to play our worst game. <laughs> we decided to play our in the last game, bro. Yeah, it'd be like that sometimes. Yeah. I know so, how it feels to win. Know how it feels to lose. Yeah, definitely do. Definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> so before we start jumping into you know college and all that stuff, I see you got the Muhammad Ali hoodie on. Like, that's real tough. So, yeah. you would you say like he's your inspiration for real? Like, yeah. 
my idol pretty much. Uh, I think greatest, like one of the greatest athletes of all time. Mm-hmm. My, he's the greatest athlete of all time. Just think about everything he did for Bosch and everything he did for the for like the people, as in black people, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like I don't know, man. It's like it's just his his like aura, his his charisma. I think everything yeah. that, that he like stuff like that. Like, I wish. Like if I could have that kind of confidence, like, I think you can do anything with that. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it was like your uh? So when did you like come across him? I would say like your your mom, stepdad, thing came. I'm um, be real, like uh, when I was a little kid playing Fight Night. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I grew up playing that too. Kid <laughs> <laughs> playing Fight Night, man. You realize like. I mean, he's a lot better than everybody else. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, go back and look at like old interviews, like old clips of him talking all the time. Like it's crazy. And then you watch like get a chance to watch his movie. And then I think uh Hulu has like a, a two part documentary like what my like what's my name, Muhammad Ali. Like it was really good. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely check that out. I know growing up, my dad used to play fight night with us. I'd always get like Mike Tyson. And he'd always get Muhammad Ali. And I'd be like, yo, why is he always beat me? Like, there's no way I can keep losing. You know, like, <laughs> it didn't make sense at the time. <laughs> Coming out of high school, you were uh, highly, highly recruited. So tell us about, like, that process. So what schools were you really interested in? How did you come across UNC? So the good part is, man, I was always interested in UNC. Like, it was, it was one of the things I talked about from the time I was in 10th grade. Cause I always figured like I wanted I wanted one really big school. Mm-hmm. Like, you always think like you want like Kentucky, Duke, USC. Like you always you want one of those three. If you get one of those three, then you're like I'm good, I'm set. Mm-hmm. But man, I set my mind on USC a long time ago. But I think we really like I really tried to reach out to them my junior year. Well, not my junior, my sophomore year. Tried to reach out to them. I mean, of course, I sent the email, didn't get nothing back from me. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's all right. So, ended up playing AU my last my last year. I switched, I switched AU teams. We ended up – I ended up just playing with them in July, and it was the best decision ever. Because, I mean, we played against somebody that was being recruited by UNC. And, of course, I had a really good game. And mm-hmm. one of the coaches ended up coming to the, the next two games, and I played really well. Okay. The opportunity ran with you. Uh, you switched to the challenge or from the challenge? I switched. Well, my last year I was with, well, I switched from the challenge to Georgia Stars. Uh-huh. I left Georgia Stars after like two tournaments to go back <laughs> to go back to Team Carroll, pretty much. Okay, you got your offers and everything. Uh, and I, I know I, I saw that you were committed to Mississippi State. You know, your dad, yeah. he coaches there. And I, I thought was, you were just going to go there, you know. But then later on, telling like you decommitted, and then you chose UNC. So really tell us what happened with that whole process. I heard a lot of different things. You know how I go. People talk. I, I want to know from you exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be told, what you, what you probably heard is the truth. But, uh, yeah, some me and my mom came to agreement on that, uh, I shouldn't go to UNC. I mean, it's it's all right, but you know, working out for the better. I think we, I think I made that decision the first decision, like based off just how I felt. But looking back at it, this this is the smartest decision I could make. Whatever you heard is is definitely between me and my mom. <laughs> when you got to UNC, like how was that? Like as a freshman coming into a Power Five, one of the best programs of all time. Like how was that experience? Coming in from day one, I was just trying to learn everything I could. Because, I mean, honestly, they told they told me, that, like, this is your freshman year. Like, you can only make these mistakes one time, and people don't look at you crazy. Mm-hmm. So I try not to make as many mistakes. I try to learn everything I could as fast as I could. Try to learn everything from the older guys, like Cam Johnson, Luke May, Theo, Joe, Kenny, now it's like you try to learn everything you can from those guys because they're not going to be here forever. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's one of the best things is like they're, they're old, like they're they're driven by older guys. So I think that's the best thing. I had good older guys around me and it, it really helped me from day one. When we came in, we had our older guys. It was a team, 
basically full of seniors, I think seven seniors. And they definitely showed us the ropes on how to, you know, approach this college basketball team. So yeah. We definitely feel you on that. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same without one for real. On the court, though, like, how was your growth in your game? Did you, do you feel like your game changed? You had to, like, adjust things? I know you say you can't really make the same mistakes, you know, as, you know, older players obviously would be able to make. But, like, how yeah. did the game grow over the, you know, your first couple of years? You have to change. I think that's I think that's a, a good thing. You have to change a little bit. You have to change what you do because, um, unfortunately, everybody everybody's going to be better. Like, everybody's going to be a lot better in college. Like everybody's gonna know what you're doing. Everybody's gonna study the film. Um, I think the biggest thing is I learned how to work. I knew what I knew what work was before coming into college. So I learned how to work. Learned what what I need to do. Like how my body could work out. Like how long I could go. What I needed. All that type of stuff I had to learn throughout the the second year. <laughs> like I went south Atlanta my first year out. My first year, I was just too busy, like, just amazed at everything. <laughs> <laughs> you look at every time before the game, you catch me looking up in the crowd, just looking at people's faces. Yeah. And stuff. yeah just amazed. But I think that in the second, that second year, I learned how to work. Um, that's the biggest thing for me. You have to learn how to work, like, alone. Like, you have to learn, learn how to work by yourself. I yeah. think that's, that's my, that, was, that was the biggest part for myself. Yeah, that's what really when that growth, like, you separate yourself. When you right. kind of just go in the gym extra time by yourself and just work on whatever you got to work on. That's for all the uh, young players out there listening. That's for y'all. <laughs> but uh, now how was it playing under Roy Williams? He's one of the best to ever do it. It's great. I'm not going to lie to you. It's great every day. He comes in with the same passion. He wants to win. I think that's I think that's all That's all he wants to do. Mm -hmm. He never wants to lose anything. I think that's – that's something that, that helps you as a player. Like he wants the same thing I want to do. He wants he wants me to win. I think if we win, our dream, our dreams are real. He tells us all the time, if we win, our dreams and goals are realistic. So if we win, we get the chance to get drafted, he get a chance to hang up banners, and we all get what we want in the end of the day. So off the court, like was uh, I hate saying this because college is such a fun time, but like <laughs> what's one of your favorite like memories off the court? Whether it's yeah. whether with it's with your teammates off the court or just like, you know, like a girlfriend you had certain class classroom shenanigans a party I don't know. But what's one of your favorite like memories that you can just think of right now for your first couple of years? My favorite thing from my freshman year is like one time me and Sterling was in the same class and like we got in I, he got in trouble. But <laughs> I, that's one of the funniest moments ever because like. The teacher told us, she was like, yeah, if you're not really liking, like, the lecture one day, like, you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sterling got it. Like, Sterling was going to use the bathroom. Like, he got up to leave. And the teacher was writing an email, like, the whole time. And she told, like, she said, as I'm writing this email, one of them is leaving class. And she was talking about yeah. Sterling. <laughs> and to this day, funniest thing that happened. Then the funny part, well, it ain't, it's funny now to me. Like, it's funny <laughs> Hey, as soon as she wrote the email up, man, she sent it to one of our coaches. She sent it to our academic advisor. And, like, they had the email, like, hung up in, like, the locker room for, like, the rest of the year. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so everybody could see it. They decided y'all walked in. Everybody saw it. Like, everybody was in, like, hey, man, who is this? And I'm like, man, it's, it's us. It's <laughs> us. He's <laughs> like, I go hide it. Those, your freshman year, that's the only time you can make those mistakes. And, <laughs> Definitely a time to live and learn. So let me fast forward now from all, um, all that time ago from your freshman, sophomore, and to your junior year, like you had a really breakout season this year. Yeah. And uh, you solidified yourself as being one of the top players in ACC. So just tell us about how this how this season unfolded, you know, like how everything went down to go into your, your big season. Yeah, I think um, just more opportunities. I think that was, that was pretty much it. I think that I had – I worked uh, – I proved that I was a really good player in practice before before they get started. I think it was just me just taking advantage of opportunities. I mean, unfortunately, we had a lot of guys get hurt. A lot of guys weren't playing well. And I think that I was very consistent in the way that I was playing and the way I came into work every day for practice, the weight room. I think that I prepared myself well. I think that's that's one of the main reasons why I was successful this past year. Mm -hmm. So how you feeling, like? It's a very, very interesting time to be 
still playing college basketball because, you know, just yeah, we all know the whole COVID-19 situation going on. So how are you feeling leading up to this uh, last season? I'm not very optimistic about this year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not very optimistic because I look at it, I'm like, man, like, how can we play with something just contagious? Like, you don't really know what people are doing. You don't know where they've been around. Yeah. I'm looking at it like, man, our first – this first, the first test is right now. So, like, if the NBA succeeds, then people are going to feel like, oh, we can do it. Like, yeah. They don't, but if they struggle to do it, it's over. We, <laughs> we Yeah. Over – it's NBA. MLB can do it. MLB can do it because they, they so spaced out with everybody. You don't even have to stand by nobody. Third, you got college football. If college football don't happen, boy, yeah. I – I don't think I know we not gonna happen. I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> and they pressing the college football right oh, now. Too. They, <laughs> they gotta get they good. <laughs> How to do it? Obviously, hopefully, you get to play your senior season, you know, and everything. Uh, you looking, you know, to get to into the draft next year. Hopefully, you know, there's a draft. Is that what your, your plans are? Yep, man. Hopefully, I can get drafted in the NBA, man. That that'd be my lifelong dream. The people probably don't, well, your people and everyone else that know you know, but Keno now, about, uh, about Mo, how he runs with your family, uh, how he was basically, at this point, the most successful uh, basketball player out of the fact he played several years overseas. Has he uh, been a big influence over you, and has he is he helping you with trying to, you know, get your get your professional career, you know, set in stone in the future? Yeah, man, my uncle huge, man. He, he's, I mean, of course, he's 5'10", but he's, he's huge in my life. I think that... Uh, I think I learned a lot from him growing up. I think that it's weird because one of the weird, like one of the weirdest things he ever, he ever talked to me about, it was his birthday. We were, I was at his house for the summer. I was like, man, like, what, what we gonna do today? We was just gonna hang out. He was like, I'm, I'm gonna go work out today. Like, mm-hmm. Do some shots. Up. I'm gonna go live. I'm gonna go run a little bit. I'm like, man, like, it's your birthday? You doing all this? But like, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. But I think that his persistence. I mean, it, it showed. It showed every day because, I mean, you look at how successful he was, you look at everything that he knows. I think he, man, he's one of the smartest people I know, like off the court, on the court. I think that he just, I mean, he, he showed me that hard work, perseverance, it, it can all lead to good things for him. What's his whole name? He said Mo. Mo Finley. Mo Finley. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, cool. I just had to clear it up for me and the audience. <laughs> I definitely didn't. I didn't know that. It was my father to introduce it, bro. Uh, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You played at UAB. Uh, he had a big shot against what, Kentucky? Kentucky, yeah. Uh, say Kentucky. Yeah, sent him home. Uh, yeah, he's a he's the most successful hooper for my, my city. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, we were talking about Muhammad Ali earlier and uh, through your Instagram posts and everything, everyone can see that you care about, you know, social uh, justice and change, you know, everything that's going on with uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and everything. But uh, you're also, like, in between because you're also at a PWI, and that's kind of, you know, different sides, you know, of the coin. So just talk about, like, your experience of, like, being a Black person in that space. When you're a Black person at a PWI, you have to balance it out, like, understanding what's going on in, like, at a PWI school, which you like, you don't think about a bunch of racial stuff. Then you have to think about HBCUs and think about how they feel about PWIs. And it's always a back and forth between schools, somewhat for some reason. Yeah. But I think people at the PWI should to really try to use their voices and really speak out about injustices and just really try to reason, like really try to understand what Black people go through every day more. Because they won't, they really won't recognize that and really go through it every day. My my little cousin, she was a freshman last year at Chapel Hill, and um, I feel like right before she went there. So this would have been two years ago, maybe your sophomore year. There was a Confederate statue on campus that you guys took down. Solid Sam, yeah. I, uh, me and a bunch of guys uh, signed a petition to have it removed from campus. Uh, Got asked a lot of questions about that, but uh, it's some of those things like that. I mean, you, I understand having like a federal monument is up to, to represent history, mm-hmm. like help us understand like what has happened. I don't think that that doesn't serve a place on on the campus that that like explains themselves of like are we 
very diverse. We respect all people of all colors, genders, and stuff like that. Like that goes against that goes against what you're saying. So it's that that doesn't need to be here if you if you feel that strongly about us. Would you say that was one of like your first you say like major impacts that when it comes to social injustice, you think that was one of the first ones you really felt was a Yeah, a, I think yeah. Yeah. I think that was a, that was my first one. Hopefully many to come, but that was that's definitely the biggest one I, I have right now. Going us going to Hampton is a little different, you know. So <laughs> we don't have to worry about things like that. But, <laughs> I, it's a separation from going to Hampton. It felt like a, a space just to be free, be yourself for them four years. And then coming back into the real world, is kind of like a shocker sometimes. Like, man, I don't know yeah. if me being in that bubble was a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know, but I enjoyed it. It's a good thing, man. Don't let it fool you. It's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't have any tattoos when you came out of high school, right? Oh, uh, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I did have any. And now you, you're super tatted, huh? <laughs> I, got a, I got an astronaut on my leg. I one love. That's what me and my brother say to each other every time we hang up the phone. It's basically just me, I love you. Yeah. And we got no evil on the back of my leg, so I speak anything into existence. I got an X over my knee for Brother Malcolm. Uh, <laughs> I got my saying on my back, stay G. So that means just be you. Uh, I got Muhammad Ali standing over fear. After you know the fight with Sonny Listen where he knocked him out. Yeah. You know, I think I got that iconic photo on with my back. You yeah. know, standing over fear. And I got Bible verse on my stomach. I'm a Christian. I got the uh, Romans. It's Romans, so basically Romans teaching people how to be a Christian. And then I got some on my chest that don't my mom don't know about right now. So this year find out. Uh so basically I got Atlas on my chest, the Greek god. And so you really try to express yourself through uh, the tattoos, huh? Yeah, man. I think that's that's one way of expressing yourself. I think, yeah, that's the way I do it. I, I won't lie to you. Everybody else, some people do it with dressing. Some people just do it with their hair. I do it with tattoos. I, I mean, I like it. Is there anything that you want to say to the people? Anything that you want to just, you know, anybody you want to shout out? I want to tell the people, just educate yourselves on anything going on around you. Um, so you can better understand, but uh, Black Lives Matter, Breonna Taylor Killer still out there, so I think we should have them arrested. And I think that's that's pretty much my message today for the for the audience that that's gonna tune in for us. And we really appreciate you uh, for coming on, man. Again, uh, it's the Off Ball Podcast, Garrison Brooks. Y'all go follow him Instagram and all of that. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk to y'all later. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching another episode of the Off Ball Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, follow us on the Anchor app, Instagram, and Twitter, and we'll be back next week with more content.